Hello and welcome to Hawk Song Weaving! I'm a disabled weaver who works exclusively with thrifted and secondhand yarn, and today I'll be weaving a springtime-themed scarf from the stash busting of a natural dyer. I hope you enjoy! Life takes odd turns, but even tattered and worn yarn still has value. Tired joints and health flares don't have to stop the journey. Welcome to Hawk Song Weaving, where all our paths are a little bit warped. Here in downtown Northampton, spring is just barely starting to peek around the corner. We've been alternating between absolutely pelting rainy days and gorgeous sunny days with a brisk breeze. The plants all have that just barely beginning to be green haze to them. No full buds yet, but the twigs and grass are beginning to green and it's just, mm, it's delightful. And while I don't celebrate Easter myself, I mostly acknowledge the spring solstice in a very busy pagan way, I grew up celebrating it secularly. I have fond memories of taking my younger siblings to the town Easter hunt and dyeing eggs. So I wanted to celebrate the faint haze of spring and the pastels that come around this time of year. Mostly I wanted to celebrate the end of seasonal depression, because here comes the sun and all that jazz. <laughs> This is the last bit of yarn that I was gifted from Patty West that I haven't already woven. She's the cousin of my partner, and if you're out in Arizona, look her up. She teaches natural dyeing methods. I'm really excited that she's coming out to Massachusetts later in the spring, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with her and some other local artists. With the warp thread sorted, I'm lifting up the loom to release the warping board from the loom, gathering the warp threads into one large bundle, and honestly using the back of my neck to drape them over and keep them tidy and out of the way while I collapse the warping board and get it tucked out of the way until I'm at a full pause point where I can get it unclamped from my desk and put away. I use terry cloth towels to cushion the warp threads. This helps prevent the finished weaving from being tighter at the ends and looser in the middle, creating a sort of sausage profile in the weaving. Before I get too far into this, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my work, some free ways to do that are to like, subscribe or follow, and share. This applies to other small artists as well. It's a great way to let the social media alg algorithms know that this is content worth watching. If you'd like to support me financially, per viewer requests, there's a buy me a coffee linked below, along with the link to the Hawksong Weaving Square site where you can purchase the unique woven products that I make. I'm currently having a spring sale. All products are 20% off. As always, there's free shipping on orders over $40. Use code SPRINGSALE24 to get the 20% off. Unfortunately, I can't ship outside of the US, but hopefully that will be available someday soon. 
The sale will run until April 3rd, when a lot of the scarves and shawls will be taken down from the website and moved to the Amherst Mill District Local Art Gallery. If you'd like to keep track of things like these sales or my vending season, I post about that on Facebook and Instagram. The way I warp has me cutting the warp loops at the end of winding the warp. This is what's easiest on my body. It won't work for everyone, but that's okay. This isn't a great angle, but I'm being careful to pay attention to how the warp threads are laying at the back bar of the loom. The right hand thread goes through the smaller hole in the rigid heddle reed. It's not critical, and some minor mistakes aren't the end of the world, but it does help make it easier to keep the tension of the warp threads even across the entire weaving. How do you celebrate spring's return? I'd love to hear about it if you're up to sharing in the comments. Attaching the warp to the bottom apron bar is pretty easy. I finger comb it, get it separated into bits about four to five warp threads wide, separate those bits into two, and then do a half hitch tie to the apron bar, making sure to leave enough room for a nice length fringe. A style of scarf that I'm settling into weaving is using the remaining yarn from a striped warp and other smaller color-coordinated balls of yarn to do a series of weft or horizontal stripes on one end, and then using the same color, or just about the same color, for the rest of the scarf. This lets me use the remaining bits of awkwardly long yarn. They're not long enough for a warp, but they are too long for me to feel comfortable about chopping them up into stuffing for my scrappy scented sachets.
Now tying off the scarf fringes, I prefer to do a 2x2 two two tied into a fringe of 4, but if I'm short on warp threads, I'll do a double sliding knot of 3. In the background, we have Penelope Calico letting me know that my heart rate is a little bit elevated and that I'm having an adrenaline dump from my postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And unfortunately, she was in fact correct, as she usually is, so I had to take a break and let my heart rate come down before continuing on. Alright, alright, you're right, you're right. Now back with some water and having had some preventative maintenance, as my partner puts it in order to take care of my body so that I can continue weaving as best I can. I steam block my wool scarves. This helps get the wool fibers to soften into each other and relax into the weave. Without steam blocking, you can get wrinkles because the weave tends to be stiff without the added heat and water. Once the steam blocking is finished, I eyeball the length of the fringe that I want and use the don't ask me how much I spent on these good sheer shears and trim it. The final step is between half an hour and 45 minutes of tying the fringe knots. Thank you for coming along as I wove a spring scarf. I'm so glad for the odd turn that your path took that brought you here. Thank you for spending time with me at Hawksong Weaving, where we're all a bit warped. I hope you have a truly excellent week. <laughs>